Welcome back to the Safeties All Show. First time in a long time. It's been way too long. What have we been? been this is doing? uh huh. What have we been doing? We can talk about that, but That's first we, before we go any further, let's go ahead and get our ad reads done. <laughs> dirty Duck Coffee is what we're sipping on right now. I got my Dirty Duck cup. He's got the OG Kepler Creek Yeti cup. I do. Yeah. It's like one of the first stickers we ever made on a cricket. We slapped it on my Yeti cup. We're like, oh, look, it's delicious, cool. by the way. It's delicious. Yes, indeed. Uh, Dirty Duck Coffee. Years ago, a passion legacy was created over common obsession for a wild pursuit of waterfowl. We drink it. I've actually got a mail off. We did a giveaway, and I I know the guy who won it, Riley, who was going to be on the show tonight, mm-hmm. and I keep forgetting to mail it. I'm a terrible person, so I've got to mail that off. He won the giveaway. He's excited about that. We're excited about him having it and trying it and getting hooked like us. Check them out. Use promo code KCO15 uh, for 15% O as in? Off. O as in open. Okay. You like that? Simple. <clears throat> Thank you. Like me. Uh, and then Trip Tech. We always got our Trip Tech here. It's a five-in-one hunting multi-tool. Works as a punch. Uses to unscrew choke tubes. Upland hunters can even use it to distinguish between mature or juvenile birds. It's awesome. Everybody needs one of these bad boys on your lanyard. And then our last one. Um... I did want to hit up Tide Wee. They sent us a uh, a blind and a blind chair, which I use. So I guess they sent me, not we. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Jordan's welcome to it at any time. You and the mouse in your pocket. Me and the mouse in my pocket. Uh, they sent us a blind and a blind chair. Great quality stuff um, and not like just crazy expensive either. And I'm going to be doing a postseason review video on the blind and the chair. But you can use promo code KCO18 for 18% off. Mm-hmm. I don't know what kind of business model they got. The Sevs gives give people eighteen percent off, but they do, and maybe it's working. I don't know. So, um, yeah, go check those guys out. Give them a follow. Check the gear out. They're three percent more sure. Yeah, three percent more than sure. the fifteen percenters that you're gonna love their stuff. Yes, indeed. Bro, I almost caught that. One. You got that heater on full blast. You got all the windows down, and you're just. <laughs> you're such a- <laughs> So, yeah, you walked in. Can we call this the studio? This is the studio. You walked into the shed studio, and we instantly were like, we hadn't seen each other in forever. You know, let's catch up. And we're like, wait, let's not catch up. I mean, we were getting all excited. Yeah, and, and, well, this well, is what I've been doing. This is what, yeah, 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 yeah. But, but no, I mean, this this is this is what the people want to see. This is what the people see. want, so let's just and talk here. about it. First off, you were going to say something about my Drake jet, my Drake vest well no jacket, no vest rewind yeah i came in wearing my kuyu jacket yeah and you gave me the whole can't hide money and you can't hide it. you try all the time and you literally cannot hide the money i really don't try that hard <laughs> okay all right anyways <laughs> sweet no, jacket no um this is this has not been a great year this is old stuff but uh so yeah you said that so i was like oh you're talking about me and you're wearing a drake vest to which you responded i don't oh so yeah i wear this drake jacket and I have a Drake vest. Excuse me. This I have this Drake vest, but I don't wear it hunting. Like I don't have enough money to to own the Drake stuff and then use it for what it's made for. I have the Drake vest, and then I wear it to like church. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the, it's kind of weird because like the guy that has Drake at church can be either or. He could be me, who's a teacher and poor, <laughs> or you could be rich and have like I have my Drake. I wear hunting. And then I have my Drake that I wear to church. See what I'm saying? It could be. See, like, well, I'm on both uh, yeah. ends of the. You never I mean, know. It could. I you mean, don't it, know. He could be wearing Sitka waders too. It, you just don't, you don't know how you know, far down the know. spectrum he goes. So know. I actually talking about Drake jackets. Yeah, Drake uh, gear. I've got. I have my my brother's waders because he got Sitka waders actually. Because you're rich. Uh, my brother, not me. Okay, continue. Yes. Uh, and his his waders are bottomland, and I like bottomland better because we're hunting in cypress trees. Yeah, and so uh, kind of. So like, you're the guy that has like different. What you're wearing. You well, have different patterns of waders for different. No, there no. These are I'm bar- <laughs> Pause. Okay, sorry. We'll, we'll come All back right, to that's that. That's my fault. That's on we'll me. come back that's to that. On me. We'll come back to that. What's up, Jacob? Uh, anyway, so I wanted the bottomland jacket to match. Hundred okay. percent. Yes, I'll admit I like my stuff to match. I'm that guy. You're, you are, you are not that guy. I am not that guy. But I am that guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, so last year, I went and bought one of the, a Drake coat 
like yeah. one of those with like the zip out liner that's got the little coat yeah. inside. Yeah. After after season, it was like fifty percent off or yeah. something. Completely forgot I bought it. Put it in my in my tote. <laughs> no, put it in my tote and then put everything away. And did not get into that tote because it was in. I have like duck one and duck two. Duck two is kind of my extra stuff. Yeah. Somehow I got put in that one. So didn't even open it. Pretty smart. And yeah. so I <laughs> you just stopped. And now it's Christmas. Uh, yeah, well, and it was Christmas. Yeah. It was Christmas. I went to uh, I went to Kansas last week to duck hunt, which we can talk about. <laughs> not much to talk about, but uh, I'm opening all my toes, getting stuff out, and here she is, tags and everything, brand new coat. It's pretty fun. Yeah, I don't ever get that lucky. When I find something, it's like a Magellan. It's like the Magellan T-shirt I found a couple weeks ago. Oh, we yeah, were, yeah. yeah, we were looking through stuff. I was like, "Sick! I have another long sleeve Magellan shirt." A moth literally flew out of that yeah. box when I opened it. That's yeah. how long that stuff's been there. Like, yeah, I so open should it I get f- moth balls? Do I get? No, God, no. So how do you keep moths out? Moth balls, but no. Just let it. Let moths. Are you an eighty-year-old cat lady? That's that, that's why I asked. There's a guy at my old camp that. Filled his camp with them, and I swear like, you could smell him driving past your stand. That's tough. Uh, oh yeah, we're PS. We're on Instagram Live. GT's uh, GT Outdoors. Hey guys, what's up, man? Jacob, who is used to be on this podcast, is now serving our country, fighting the war in Korea. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, he's in South <laughs> Korea. Uh, he's deployed. He's been there for like I don't know if he's still on Instagram Live. He needs to tell us, but I think like forty days, and they've had him in a hotel. Has not got his. Has not gotten his room yet or anything. He's just hanging out in a hotel. Forty nights. Forty days in a hotel, just hanging out, playing Call of Duty, working. He works. Does he though? Uh, he said forty-one days. He just he just commented. <laughs> He's kind of scratched days. out on the wall. <laughs> yeah, and so I talked to him last week, and I was like, uh, just he was just telling me, you know, like how Korea is and stuff, and he updated me. He has bought a scooter. He has oh, bought himself a, a scooter. Mo- a little moped. Wife got mad at him. Yes. Obviously, it, it happens. Got him a little, got him a little scooty boy, a little Vespa. Just, yeah, just to scooter to and from work. So uh, good for him. Good for Jacob. Uh, if you're still on, got a sweet scooter. Well, and now you guys know Jacob. Not a, not a real, not the smallest of men. Not a Jacob. Look, yeah, he, he said scooter gang. He's a part of scooter gang, but he may not have the scooter physique like I. You you look like a Vespa guy for sure. I am a moped guy. <laughs> like you just call it out it is. Like I'm the guy that shows up to the to the Harley place. They're like, nah, dude, this ain't for you. Yeah. No. The Honda place across the street, they got some sweet rebels. <laughs> little uh two fifties. You that's all you need, brother. A little Grom. Remember the Groms they looked like little toys? You see yes. guys riding around with the wheels yes. like eight inches wide? Yes. hmm So yeah, Jacob's been in Korea. Oh, he said his scooter goes 31 kilometers per hour. Stop, dude. You've been living in Korea for 40 days. You do not automatically learn the metric system. I don't know the math, but I know mileage is less. So what does it go, like 15? I don't know. Usually the ones that you get, like the bird scooters in like when we go to Austin or wherever they have them, like Austin, Texas has them, they go like 19 miles an hour. I'm, see, I was picturing a ride-on scooter. Now he no, told me no, that, and I'm picturing like yeah. a stand-up yeah, like yeah. push scooter. No, it's a motorized scooter. It's just not – I don't. okay, and we're a hunting outdoors, I thought, podcast, but now we're on scooters, but here we are. Yeah. Uh, I think it's like an electric scooter, and Jacob can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if the Korea internet's like, like three minutes behind, but it takes him like three minutes to respond. Like the stand-up, stand-on kind? Yeah. Okay, not what I was. I picturing. don't think it's a moped. That's why I kept saying moped no, and Vespa. No, 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 you no. never like, I think you got to. Well, I just let your imagination run wild, man. <laughs> That's what I like to do, you know. <laughs> just see where you go. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I think it's one of those. But uh, yeah, he's been in Korea. I have been um, coaching, I guess. Yeah, but you had a lot, to, a <laughs> yeah, lot to co- coach state yeah. championship. Yeah, I went to game. Yeah, got to coach in a state championship in the New Orleans uh, Superdome. That was freaking sweet. Yeah, because I got in. Two weeks before that, it was quarterfinals that we got in late. Semifinals kind of mm-hmm. knocked our weekend off. Mm-hmm. And then, obviously, we got in late Sunday. We played on Saturday last week, got in uh, kind of latest Sunday, and we both kind of had stuff. It was just tiring weekend. Lost in the state championship. Don't want to talk about it. Uh, but – I still haven't asked you about it. Yeah, no, I was just, it was cool to be there, man. It was a great experience as a coach. Um, it was a great experience, obviously, for the kids and for the community of Stonewall, Louisiana. We'll be back. There you go. Mock my words. Freshman we'll quarterback. Back. You got plenty of time. Freshman quarterback. Um, yeah. Anyways, we don't want to talk about high school football, but freshman quarterback 
ton of kids coming back. Uh, a ton of kids in the program as freshmen, sophomores, and eighth graders that are really good. So we'll be back. Thanks for bringing it up. Thoughts from the cheap seats. That's my thoughts from the cheap seats. And I was in the cheap seats. Let's just talk about that for just a second. Holy cow, the Superdome, man. I've, I've, never, I've never been. Oh, my goodness. So I've gone to the Superdome and watched the Saints game before. Watched a few. Um, but obviously, being a teacher, I don't get to sit bottom bowl. Mm -hmm. I got to sit up in the nosebleeds, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm never like, oh, these are miserable. Like, they're not that terrible of seats. Um, you just want to be in the building in the Superdome in the Saints game. I mean, it's like you're at a party and a football game broke out. You know, it's not mm -hmm. like you. It's crazy. So uh, we get there to the Superdome, and we get there a little early. We're the first game of the day, so we get to get on the field. And I was, like, telling the other coaches, like, I'm not ashamed. I'm taking every picture with anybody who wants to take one. We're standing on the floor to Lee. <laughs> We're doing whatever we want to do. Like, nobody cared what you did. It was just weird, you know, to have that, like, freedom in the superdome yeah and like like you're supposed to be there yeah like we're supposed like we're supposed to be there and uh like coach parker my buddy is like setting up film and stuff and they're like yeah yeah just go up there hit go to the elevator by the saints locker room go up like that was just in casual conversation i thought that was just so cool and that is did you get uh, to go in the locker room no nah, they had it shut right. they had all they have a lot of visiting locker rooms in there they have like several and we had one of them i think there was like seven of them You'd think they'd, like, give you a tour or something. I I think in years past they have. They've even let you practice on the field beforehand. We didn't get to practice. Our kids, the first time they stepped foot in the Superdome was 11 o'clock. Really? We had a, from 11 to 11.50 to warm up. Um, so where'd y'all do walkthroughs? We did walkthroughs at the indoor facility at LSU. Uh, okay, still not bad. Still not, still a bad, not, not bad. a bad. Not a bad consolation prize I've to seen, go to I've the indoor I've seen an interview in that, in that facility. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and some of the coaches got to go in the LSU locker room and whatnot, so that was pretty neat. It was an experience. The whole thing was an experience. But what I was getting at with the seats, like the cheap seats, whatever, um, but then you go up one higher, and that's where we sat. The, you know, like there's me and my buddy Matt on the offense side. We have two defensive guys, and, and a, well, I guess there's three offensive guys. But anyways, the coaching staff that goes up top sat there on the home side's booth, and, dude, it is like you're looking down on the players. Like you can almost see like what um like what tech the defensive linemen are in. Like you'd be like, Oh, he's this, he's that. Like really? it's just pretty cool, man. It's like you're over the top of them. Andrew Harp said he got to practice on the field in twenty thirteen. Yeah, they stopped doing awesome. that. I guess when COVID and then the splits and all that craziness happened, I think all that somehow the practice time got I don't know, just got washed. I don't know what was going on there. But hopefully when we make it back next time we'll be able to practice on the field because it was quite the experience. Well, it may depend on the <clears throat> on the season too. You know, I mean, they're in season, obviously, so there might have been some some yeah. stuff going on the day before. I don't know because there's state championships Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and what they usually do is let the teams for the next day practice the morning before the games before. If that makes any sense. So, mm -hmm. like, if you play on a Friday, you would practice Thursday morning. And luckily, we went down on kids went down on Thursday. Practice at Catholic High in Baton Rouge uh, at around the time we were going to play, like one, to kind of get your bodies right. And then the next day, practice at LSU at one and then played at 12 on Saturday. So we were almost kind of used to not playing. You know what I'm saying? Like we yeah. had three different fields. I don't know. We practiced it indoors. So you could kind of get used to catching the ball and doing everything indoors. But then, hey man, nothing, nothing compares to the Superdome. Like, I mean, it's it's overwhelming. As like a sports fan, just sports fan, just Saints fan, not even like just me as a coach, I was just in awe. Like, I'm on the same field. I mean, Nick Saban, Kyle Shanahan, Tyler Warren. I mean, three guys <laughs> that have all stepped foot on the Superdome floor. Uh, there you go. I mean, pretty soon, nuts. Soon to be Drew Brees. I, I just kept doing that to all of our suck players. I was like, Drew Brees, Brett Favre, and then I'd say their name. Like, all three kids that have been on here. <laughs> Three guys have played on this field. <laughs> they didn't think it was that funny because they knew what I was doing. But uh, it was a great experience. So that's what I've been doing. Uh, the grind of coaching and not wanting to do anything else. Haven't been hunting like at all because you get in late and you just want to sleep. And then you got to make your wife happy at some point in between all this. And got to prepare for the next week. Try to at least. My role is very small on the coaching staff, but I still try to put a little bit of time into it. So, um yeah, 
anyways, that's that's what I've been doing. Meanwhile, you've been in Kansas. That's a lot. <clears throat> it's a lot, but it, it was a cool experience. I'm glad I got to share it a little bit. But oh, it's awesome. Yeah, man. I'm jealous. Hopefully, not a once in a lifetime. No, at yeah. least twice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I haven't done much at all. Uh, works real slow. In fact, I got a new side hustle just because work is so slow. Yeah, uh, you're a land man. I'm a land man now. Yeah, which I yeah. 30 years old didn't know what a land man was. That was tough. Yeah. Especially in this state. That's all we do is oil and yeah, gas around here. That's pretty tough. Super easy. I work like an hour. But yeah. um but yeah, no, we went to me and a couple buddies or a buddy. It was supposed to be a couple of us. Um went to Kansas last week, drove ten and a half hours. Oof. Went to like mid middle Kansas. Yeah. Uh gross. Yeah. You know was, the ducks come to the other sides too. Was, yeah, well, so this guy, which you know, I'm gonna go to church with him. Okay. Um him and like seven or eight other family and i guess friends now have been going to this same spot for 12 years they stay in the same little crappy motel eat at the same diner like they know all the public spots around there which side note we're doing public completely wrong in this state completely wrong tell me more so kansas now they have wmas and stuff too yeah but their public land is walk-in spots yeah but you know, so it's like you know, you've got. Mm. You may have like ten acres. Yeah, and the state will yeah. say, "Here, we'll give you four dollars an acre." Right. To we to talked about that here. Public. Have we? Yeah, because I that's what I told it, or maybe I don't know if you're on that. Ep, that I don't think we talked about that. Maybe me and Jacob did because we we were cruising around in Kansas hunting, like we hunted Neosho, like the place you always hear about Neosho, Mary Eyes Desain or whatever it is, looks like Desainness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we would just drive around to whatever they call them, W, W, or IE, whatever, yeah, some uh, acronym. Crap, I forgot but, now. But yeah, what but you're yeah. talking about, right? Yeah. And so we were riding around, and we didn't know where water was. On it was This was before when we were kind of morons. We weren't really looking at Onyx a ton. We were just kind of driving around. And um, anyway, so we look over, and there's no water, but it's just fields. And so we just keep checking all these fields, blah, 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 blah. And then we come up on one, and a buck is chasing a doe. And he's mm-hmm. like legit, like trying to she she's trying to juke him out. And that's the coolest thing about Kansas. Yeah, I mean you could, and it was three hundred yards away. But if we'd been deer hunters, I mean we'd have got out right Just there. Pop out, yeah. Here we go, guys. Let's go try to get them. Well, and that's what jacked us up. So I mean the the second funnest part of Kansas is you know the roads are all in a grid. Right. They're all like the nicest gravel you've ever been on. So yeah. I mean you just cruise. You know you just yeah. ride around in glass, and I yeah. mean look at all the deer. That's the best best Burn part. Gas. Right, Thanks, a, lot of, a lot of gas. Uh, but we went the week after gun season opened. Yeah, there were no deer. Really, anywhere. Is they, that what y'all were doing, deer hunt? No, we were duck oh, hunting. Okay, but okay. but I mean, right. you can't duck hunt all day. Right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we did the second day just to make sure we killed ducks. But yeah, so just to say you killed one. It was supposed to be cold, but cool. Uh, it ended up being cold and freezing. Mm. and it was completely iced up the first morning, like locked up. So we're out there busting, you know, pretty good, not quite half inch, probably about half inch ice. Um, couldn't kill anything. I think we, think we killed two. Next day, we stayed out there pretty much all day. Got out there at 10, stayed till dark, and we, we scratched out a limit. Um, and then third day, we didn't kill anything. So flight ducks, no ducks. Just so apparently there's there's a big reservoir there. Yep. And I have yet to determine whether the guy knew this information before we went or if he learned <laughs> it after we got there. Yeah. But uh the story is that they have been setting cannons off every so often to keep the keep birds the birds up. off because of avian flu. Oh. And so the birds that are normally trading back and forth cuz they got a good bit of water on this yeah. property. Oh, this is his this wasn't public by the way. This was his private lease in the middle of all this public yeah rich it's not mine so you can say whatever you want yeah it's true yeah it's not yours what do you um, care must be nice is all i'm gonna say yeah must be nice but uh anyway no, we were straight public when we were there we didn't we, didn't, well, we would have done better going to public but right uh it's still it was a good time so did y'all like go off all the biologist numbers and like check them before you went and stuff like that or no Mm-mm. Not here because we knew where we were going. I mean, it's yeah. private water. Why? Why wouldn't you go there? You know, and he was. And, oh, I mean, so you weren't. Even, you were just like, we're going to this spot every single day. He, yeah. The plan was to go there, and depending on how the birds worked, we'd go over to the reservoir, yeah. and then. So I think he didn't know till we got there, but yeah, reservoir was not to be not to be done. So it was a 
it was all right. But I mean, we've done better. We've had here. one of the better years here that we've yeah. had in, in a long time. We killed fifteen Saturday. Dang. Mm-hmm. That's I say we. About. I left. I left at seven thirty, and we had killed eight, and then they killed seven more after I left. That's pretty good. So in forty five minutes or so, you killed. Mm-hmm. Eight. That's not bad. Yeah, and that for was, Louisiana duck hunting, that's pretty dang good. We could have. They they flew about five minutes too early. Like legal was still too dark to see. So we had a lot that we that we didn't shoot at. Buzzing. Um, Buzzing had some boys. poachers in there too that morning. What? Yes. Tell me. Yes. I want to hear about that, dude. I'm sitting here on the tree. You found it out there yeah, huh? where you stood. Yeah. Looking out in the tree line, and I see a flashlight go like kind of you know between trees. And I said, "There's a there's a flashlight out there." I'm like, "No, there's not. You're seeing a you're seeing an oil rig through there." I'm like, "No, there's a flashlight." Sure enough, three figures emerge. And so, if you remember, there's a property line halfway down. Yeah. Where there's a marker. Mm-hmm. So we have the north half. A deer lease has a south yeah. half. And they used to duck hunt it, but we haven't seen them out there in years. Yeah. Well, so these three guys come out about fifty yards north of the property line. Yeah. And they're like heading to us, and then they stop. Have my flashlight or my headlight on, and they stop. And one of them walks back in the woods, and the other two just turn and go straight to the south end as far as they can go. And like we're hollering at them, and they just keep on going. Put out a mojo and like four decoys and hunt, shoot some birds. And then when I get up and leave at seven thirty, they grab all their stuff and just take off. And so. You know, we're so arguing. Kids maybe, we're ar- it looked like kids. We're arguing about whether they were supposed to be out there or not. Like maybe they're on the deer lease. I said, man, a the one dude straight up checked out as soon as he saw we were out there. He was gone. Oh, so, so one of them just straight. One left. of them he left. never came back or hunted in the woods. I don't know. Right, but he yeah. came out and then went back. Uh, and then like the nodding. fact that like we're hollering and they're not right, stopping. You don't say nothing yet. So I said, I guarantee you, it's some kids that Ariel yeah. scouted this, and yep. you know we're like a mile off the interstate. Yep. In a block of woods, in a cow pasture, like yeah. you don't happen upon this. No. Um. Anyway, he called the guy whose family has our half. That guy called the other guy who has the other half. And long story short, they did not have permission to be out there. They were they parked on the side of the interstate. We saw their truck and, and just rolled in, rolled in, and then had the stones stay out there and hunt until one of y'all walked. They were like, "Oh, we can beat them to the truck." Mm-hmm. Which they didn't. I totally could have gone down there and been sitting by their truck, but yeah. Because they had a long kind of ways to go. It? Can we know that? I didn't see it. The one, the other guys oh, went okay. and saw it. I had to go. That's why I left at seven thirty. Yeah, Christmas definitely that some morning. kids. Dude, I mean that's that makes me. I've never done anything like that. So when people, I mean obviously, and I never would, just because I know how much work people put into it, and how much money people put into it, mm-hmm. and time, and, and this and that. But like, I'm not. I'm not a big fan of running dogs for deer. Just not. I don't really enjoy it. It's. To me, it's like borderline ethical, unethical, like because the shot you're going to put on this huge animal mm-hmm. might not be a super accurate one. So, anyways, that's another argument. But um, I'm, in fact, state championship morning. I'm actually sitting on the Superdome floor, and I get an update that I've got some uh, pictures on my phone for you know from my camera and Bernice, and I go to check it, and there's five or six deer just standing it by my feet. I'm like, oh, this is sick. I go again. A bunch of them looks. They're all running with their tails up. Swipe again, dogs. <laughs> Swipe again, dogs. Swipe again, dogs. Jeez. Like it was like four or five different dogs that were chasing these deer, and and what are you gonna do? I'm yeah. in New Orleans, and none of And then too, like, I mean, it's not necessarily illegal to drop your dogs and I guess them run a deer across your property as long as you don't kill it. I don't really know. To be honest with you. I don't know either. Because, I mean, you can't stop the dogs from going over oh, there. Oh, you can stop it. But you would think that would still be considered, I mean, that's still trespassing, You can definitely right? stop it. I would say that's still trespassing. But, yeah. Just because they're not a person doesn't mean that they don't have permission to be out there. Yeah. Or that they do have permission to be out there. Yeah. If only you had an uncle or somebody that was a game warden that you well, could ask so that I question Well, so I sent him the picture, to. and I was like, well, this is irritating. You know, and. He had a joke back that I won't repeat on here, but 
And you can stop a dog from coming on there. You don't. It ain't the dog's fault for running the deer out there. No, you don't right. Want to punch the dog, hurt the dog. Kill yeah, him, I'm saying. Obviously. I'm saying like if you're a guy running dogs mm-hmm. and they're a quarter mile ahead of you or whatever. I mean, you don't know if they're on the property or not. Like right. I get that happening. Right. Yeah, it's tough. It's, it, it's hard to know. Now, if you would have seen a bunch of hunters <laughs> come, oh, then come I'd be running. fired up. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be different. That would, that would be. Have, have I told you? I told you the trail cam picture or no? Out there. The sto- yeah. Uh-huh. The story about me freaking out, sending the coordinates or no? No. Oh, this is great then. Um, yeah, I guess we hadn't podcasted in a long time. So it's been a minute. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me. At the beginning of the rut, there found a bunch of scrapes, and um, we put so we put out some more trail cameras in different spots. And uh, the guy who hunts it from Arkansas, he put a new camera out. So there's a pot, a plot that's about fifty by fifty, maybe. I don't know. Just guessing. And he's got a camera on each end of it now. So he's watching both. He's got one at the north point and south, and south point and north. Okay, so his his thing is he's he said that there was a buck traveling at the north end. So he's like, I'm not going to change this camera. I'm just going to put a new one over there. That way, when he crosses this, you know, this plot, I'm going to see it no matter where he's at. Mm-hmm. So cool. So he sends me a screenshot one morning of what looks to be a flashlight in a picture like it's a it's a doe and in the background of the doe it looks like a light it looks like a flashlight is it the other camera <laughs> and so i'm freaking out <laughs> i'm like dude i'm not the one weekend i'm not there it's the one saturday i'm not there and i'm i mean so i i screenshot that i sent it to my uncle and he goes um is it the moon you think and i said no this is north pointing south it's definitely not the moon he says, okay, well, then give me the uh, coordinates of it, and I'll send a guy out there that's, you know, such and such as area, but I'll get a guy on there right now to check it out. And I was like, sweet. So I get on HuntWise, I get the coordinates, I'm like, this guy, this guy's dead, <laughs> right? He's dead meat. And uh, I am just fired up. And I sent it to Travis, of all people, during all this. Love Travis. Tell me Travis didn't figure this out. I sent it to Travis, and Travis goes, didn't he put some more cameras out? I said, yeah. Like, thinking like, yes, moron. Like, that's not – I'm trying to see, you know, if this is a person or not. He goes, you think that's a camera taking a picture of the other camera? And I was like, dang it. He's right. <laughs> it's, like, perfect. When you said, let Travis yeah, out, thank you. And as soon as, like, he scenario? said it, I was, I was so pissed. I was like, dead gummit. Travis is never going to let me live this down. Ever. But – he was right. His he chance just, to air it out would be to come on the podcast. Oh, and I called him today to see if he'd come on. No. He said he couldn't work that in his schedule. Oh, couldn't pencil us in. Could that's what he said. I can't pencil I, you I in. I believe tonight. it. Said, okay, buddy. He's so, with, he's got a fiance now, yeah, man. He's so got we priorities. Had, yeah, he does have a fiance now. So he's a boss. And then he's mm-hmm. also got a boss at work. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, we had a we had a trail cam taking a picture of another trail cam and I was about to call the SWAT National Guard army everybody down there to bernice louisiana <laughs> looking for somebody man i was so mad but anyways yeah great story it is a great story but had me fired up for about 20 minutes 100 percent. i was up. very upset i was like somebody's out there right now killing all my deer but uh yeah nobody just pictures being taken so <laughs> oh we've got way well, i don't think we got way too many we got a ton of truck cameras out there now Oh, there's no such thing more. as too many. I was about to say, we're only going to get As long more. as they're cell cams and you're not in and out checking them all the time, I say the more the better. Yeah. Um, David, who has a property with us, he's got some cell cams and some non-cell cams. Travis is you getting... Get, you get finicky on that. If yeah. you're in there every two weeks pulling he's cards... Not, he's then, in there every... He's been the property three times. It's oh, December. I don't know so. what the point of having them yeah. is then. Just, so he just wants them just because he's got them sitting at the house. Yeah. He's like, the more the Put merrier. Them yeah. And I, I mean, I agree. I'm about to get more of the um, Bushnell Cellucor. I'm changing brands for sure. That's the one, you know, I did the the review video of. Mm-hmm. Simmons sent me that one and the Covert uh, to kind of try out and give reviews on. And the Covert's not bad, but the Bushnell just, I don't know, it just seems like it takes less service to send me a picture. I had, the, I'm not exaggerating, I've had the same batteries in it for over a year. Wow. The same batteries. 
not exaggerating. I don't know if that's a testament to how bad my hunting land is where that camera's at <laughs> or the battery in the camera. It might be a little bit of both, but uh, GTI Door said he wants all cell cameras. Yeah, I mean, they're the thing to have now. It's 2022. Yeah. 2023. Well, that's not even like we've talked about it. There's things that, that trick the deer. There's things that trick the hunter. But like that is that is a, an absolute game changer, not just for convenience, which is huge. Time management. But yeah, I mean, I mean, it's big. You're saving yeah. your time and gas going out there. Yeah. But it's way better for your deer because yeah. or for your population, leaving them alone. We talk about, yeah. you know, like Sturgis says, trying to have this area that you don't that you don't ever enter well if you're like, like i said if you're in and out every two weeks yeah, checking like cameras a sanctuary of some sort mm -hmm. that you're so, like that's what we're kind of seeing on this property now too so like obviously every month is a new month on this property we hadn't even been there a whole calendar year so now the deer in that area are on the second rut so i think they're kind of moving a little different they're in different areas too than they were in early season because they're not there's still some acorns on the ground in some places. Yeah, but food source is changing yeah, significantly right now. Yeah, food starting to change. The weather's starting to change, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so they're in different areas, and it's pretty cool to see. You hit the bottom of the coffee. Oh, I, I saw the, that face. Hit, the, hit, the, cold, the, hit the, cold, no, the cold spot. It was literally warm my last sip, which was about two minutes ago. Oh, I got a little bit left. Uh, yeah, I do love the GTI Doors guy said they're good to have because the pictures go to your phone. It is sick. It's good and bad. I find myself like I'll wake up at two AM in the morning, I'm like, got gotta check the trail cam. Oh, let me I got a story for that. Let's so hear. my camera at, at the at the duck hole, I can yeah. deer hunt out there too, right? Uh <laughs> be smart if you had a camera on the actual duck hole where you knew if ducks were coming. Oh, that's too big. You couldn't you wouldn't that's be able true. to see yeah. anything. But uh so I do that too. When it goes yeah. off, I usually check it. So that happened and like three in the morning I get this picture. And I'll show you no. Yes, I can show you the picture. If you have a story, go ahead and go ahead and tell it. Cause no, this is, this is just great radio. You trying to find this picture? I hope to God it takes like five ten minutes, and I'm gonna filibuster the whole just, time about just wait. how long it takes you to find just this waste a bunch of well. That I hope to God is a great picture. Because it's gonna take a second because oh, this was like nine weeks ago, wasn't no, it? No, it logged me out of Spot Point for some. Oh, here we go. I first off, I'm not looking at this picture because it's a Spot Point camera. I'm not looking at it. Nope. Not doing it. I refuse. How do you, of all people, you have Sitka gear, QU, or whatever that name is, drinking Dirty Duck coffee. QU. Drinking Dirty Duck coffee, and you use a spy point camera. This is an old spy point camera. That's even worse, right? Oh, no. Oh, it deleted. This is a great story. It did, but all my pictures are gone, That's which is weird because the year hadn't started over Poachers. yet. Poachers. You didn't pay your bill. It, this is tough. It auto bills. Anyway, dang it. It's not going to be as – you're not going to get it. Okay. I I get this picture at 3 a.m. I roll over. I'm all froggy, you know, and, yeah. and cloudy-eyed, and I'm looking at it. And I sit straight up in bed, and my heart falls through my butt. And I'm looking at this thing, and I cannot for the life of me figure out what I'm looking at. I think this is like the freaking boogeyman's dog. It's the scariest-looking animal I've ever seen. Chupacabra. Something. Yeah. And it's all spotty, and its head is, like, too small for its body, and it's ginormous, and it freaked me out. Took me a solid minute to figure out what it was. What is it? All right. Now you got me. It's a freaking cow. A so cow. this is a pasture. Yeah. But it's not your normal, like, black and white spot Chick-fil-A cow. Right. This is some kind of weird, because I looked at it in the daylight when I went back out. It's like one of those haired cows? Like one I'm of looking out. Hair, uh, no, it's not one of those. But have you ever seen people? the, you ever seen a nil guy? No. Uh, Bill Nye? Nil. Bill not Science? Science guy? guy? No, it's a, some kind of Indian cow kind of thing. But it's exactly what I said. They have massive bodies and really small heads. That's what this cow looks like. I saw it in the daylight and it looks the same way. It's the weirdest looking cow I've ever seen. Huh. But that cow in the dark in black and white at 3 a.m. scared me for life. And then the camera stopped working right after that. Shocker. That was the last picture I got. Shocker. Oh, here's the big shocker. So that was my old spot point, right? I went and I was going to go buy some reveals because they've got great reviews. Yeah. Uh, Tacticam? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. The um, XB, I think, is what I was going to get. But they had the new spot points out, the Flex. 
And everybody said, oh, the flex is great. I know spot points suck, but you got to go get the flex. That's, can, what, all the, that's what Go Wild is sponsored it's by. It's dual band, yeah. and it's got GPS, and it bands. takes way better pictures yeah. and blah, 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 blah. It literally worked for two days and stopped working. Like, just dead. Done. DOA. Hmm. No, shocker. Shocker. Color me shocked. Mm-hmm. I'm not. Like, no. honestly, like, I'm not just, I get no money by people buying the bush nails. You know, and I had somebody the other day talk about how bad bush nails were, and I was like, dude, I'm, I've had this one a year and a half, not a one issue. And not really that bad issues with the covert. I just feel like it needs more service. I don't know if that makes, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, like to send an actual better, picture. A better antenna. Yeah. And so I'm going to go, whenever I buy new ones, I'm going to buy two more bush nails. I'm going to put them all in the same plan. I think the deal with the bush nail, because I've looked into them, because they had like a, like a two for – yeah, two for whatever price. Um, if you read the reviews, it's like three and a half stars, and it's because it's either all it's either full five star best camera I've ever or had one. your story or a one. Lemon. It's because they're I think they're cheaper made, and so there's a lot of lemons in the run. But if you don't get the lemon, it's a great camera. I don't know. And the Bushnell people like on Instagram message me back. I feel like if something were to go wrong, I could be like, hey, mm-hmm. look, I love your stuff. This one sucks. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Or we could we could just go get Reconics, sell our soul souls mm-hmm. and while we're at the Sitka store. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you this: Travis isn't going to listen this far into the podcast, if at all, because he's a jerk. So he's going to get a Bushnell, I think, for Christmas from his fiance, a Bushnell cell cam. I think he's going to want to get on the same like camera plan. See where I'm going with this? No. Do I want to share? Do I want to share intel with Travis? Like, do I want to have the same account as Travis, and every time I see a deer picture, he sees it too? Or do I want, do I need to keep that in my back pocket and be like, "Yeah, dude, I don't know, man. All I've got is does and little bucks, man." I <laughs> so uh, to keep you know, them off mine. There's always the guys that don't share pictures, yes, and everybody hates them, yes. But on the other hand, nobody shares pictures. See, I share pictures. Like there was, I'll share. I'll share pictures with you. I share pictures with Travis. Like on the lease, like there was this. There's this one younger guy who was known to never share a picture, not no. one. And he would also go check other people's cameras. Like he was kind of weaselly that way. Yeah. And everybody always That's talked just about being it. A jerk. Yeah. Remember, they always talked about it. And they always like, oh, he never shares pictures. Never shares pictures. But you go look at the group me. Like there's no pictures. <laughs> Nobody shares them. So I mean, we all blame him, but. Well, he's kind of stealing your intel. They say on Instagram, ve- first off, very serious hunting. If that's your if that's your name on Instagram, he's not sharing. He said he's not sharing pictures. Mm. Obviously, he's not sharing. Understood. His, his name is very serious hunting. Yeah. And then GT Outdoors said, yeah. Don't yeah, share. I mean, my thing about it, like, like if it's me and my dad on a property, I'm sharing pictures. Yeah, I'm gonna share with if if it's a <laughs> if it's a group of able bodied people. Right, and I worked to find the spot and track the deer and put the camera in the right spot. I think I earned the right to have no, uh, yeah. my own in, in information on that deer. Yeah, if you hung the stand, you did all right. that stuff. Yeah, if it's like off season plots, well, or if you know, if you got if you got a camera on a, on a feeder and everybody hunts and everybody rotates or rotates yeah. or whatever, then yeah, share the picture. But yeah. if you if, if if that exact thing happens, so at that least, you know, I mean, it's. You go to a, every feeder. There's four cameras on it, so right. everybody has the picture. But the, all those go really, to yeah. Every, that is miserable. Yeah, it sucks. That's why I don't hunt the feeders. Yeah. Um, but there's also it's a free for all on the stands too. So I mean, everybody yeah. wants to know where everything is. So all those are shared. But yeah, I was going off, you know, half a mile away and finding my own stuff and right. setting up my saddle and all that. Yeah, so I'm you not, don't want to tell people. I'm not sharing know. those pictures. Yeah, I know. I, I I'm the only one doing the work. GT said share it with close friends and family. I mean, yeah, I'd share it with family for sure. Travis is a close friend, I guess. I don't know. I guess. <laughs> Depends on what day you ask me. See, but that kind of goes, and it's nothing against Travis. If I was something there, I'd do the same thing probably. Like, y'all can both do the same amount of work and scouting. So I would say if you find a deer. I feel like Travis should share his with me, and I shouldn't have to share him with Travis because I'm letting him hunt the property. I mean, ultimately, that's the that's, ultimate. That's, let's that's, just get to where let's, that's let's where it get needs to the to meat and potatoes of yes, it. Right. He needs to give me his login. I see what he sees. He doesn't get to see what I see. Right. Just a hierarchy of Kepler Creek, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. When we get down to it, right? It's a totem pole. I mean, it's a totem pole thing. If he if he would ever come on the podcast, maybe I'd let him see my login. Maybe so. Doubt it. 
hundred percent doubt it, but I think about it. <laughs> oh man. We're closing in on forty minutes. We just had so much to say. Oh, we had so much to say. I feel like twenty minutes of it was just me talking about coaching high school football, but Okay, one last segment because we've already gone over thirty minutes anyway. Yeah, do it. Let's do our little gift ideas because we're not going to have another episode. So, yeah. oh, mine's on my notes on my phone. We're I didn't write. Well, I didn't write anything down. We can just oh. whatever pops in your head. So, we're gonna do just like stocking stuffers, nothing big. Yeah, but last minute. Oh yeah, nothing big. Last minute little little gift ideas for the hunter. Okay, for the for all the wives that listen to this show. Yes, especially forty minutes in. Yes. My wife definitely isn't going to make it to 40 minutes, but will I chop it up, put it as an Instagram reel? Maybe. I'll tell you a big one for me, and I love them. Well, two things. One, hot hands. Hot hands. Love hot hands. And you know um, what? Now, I used to be a hot hands only guy, only get hot hands that brand, but those general grabbers, grabbers or whatever they are, yeah. they're fine now. They used to suck. General grabbers are tires. Then what am I thinking of? It's grabbers. It's just grabbers. Okay, you just said the same word twice. No. Say it again slower for us. It's at home. just grabbers. It's something. They're not general something. grabbers. No, that's a tire. Either one would heat you up. Mm-hmm. No, they work fine. I don't think they last as long, but they work fine. Yeah, um, we're gonna find out. I don't know. My mom buys them for me every year. Always has. Yeah. So that's I go to great one. Though. Go to her house on Christmas, and she gives me my little hot hands, and I love it. You need them. Also, the not everybody has a Bass Pro, but you can order this on Cabela's dot com yep. or whatever. They sell a three pack of cotton gloves, black, green, and kind of a camo, like just knit gloves that have the little rubber dots on them. Yeah. That is it, all I wear duck hunting exclusively. I saw you in some. That's all I wear. They're warm enough. They're thin enough to still handle your shells and stuff. Yeah. They're warm. They get wet. Plenty warm. It, you got three pairs. I keep three pairs in my bag all the time. One of them will usually get wet. Then I'll take them home, dry them out, and put them back in. I'll just rotate through them. That's a great little tip. I mean, God, you're just so full of such knowledge. Extra gloves is a key. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. And I, I love those for stocking stuffers. They're cheap, too. Like seven yeah. bucks. It's, you yes. Yeah, chunk them in there. Seven mm-hmm. bucks. All right, so hot hands, gloves. What else you got? Uh, less cheap, but if you're thinking real gift ideas, <clears throat> gift ideas. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I'm... If you were growing up in yeah. front of everybody here. Um, I'm really into merino wool right now because everybody is. Everybody is. I'm a, yeah. I'm a, and I'm I a, am too. Especially early season. I'm a sweaty guy. Yeah. You know, it helps with the scent. We live in Louisiana. It's super comfortable. So, like, I've slow because it is expensive. Yeah. But I've slowly gathered. Now I've got, you know, the socks and the underwear and the leggings and the top. Like, it's comfortable and at least. First light. Talk about money. I don't know. First light brand. First light's not that expensive. And then plus they had like a uh, 30% off for Black Friday. So you could get the underwear for like 15 bucks. Yeah. I get mine on Camo Fire, whatever comes up that day. The Black Office or whatever it's called. Dude, it's nice too. I've got, I I have never, never bought any of the Black Black Office, Black Office stuff. (laughs) Yeah. Anybody from Black Office or Ovis want to holler at us? Camo Fire. No free ads. Camo Fire. Come be a sponsor. Yeah. Camo Fire. Give me some money. Come be a sponsor. Yeah. Uh, Because we have bought. Lots of stuff from, yeah. from them. I have um, not. Only bought oh, one I've, thing. I've but bought a lot of stuff from yeah. Camelfire. They need to get their shipping stuff situated. I thought you were about to say something else. <laughs> like, that too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they need to get their shipping together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, very serious hunting on Instagram said, good socks, good socks are killer. I was going to, that was my point with but this. one yeah, pair of good socks. The, now I've got, that's, that, well, that was my, I, Got sidetracked. That yeah. was my point with the merino. Yeah. Is merino socks? That's a yeah. good stocking stuff. One pair of good socks. They're and just super move warm. Your toes. Move your toes. Mm-hmm. Maybe stick a hot end in there. Maybe. No, I don't do that. You don't want to sweat. Ooh, I'll tell you a little tip for that too. Especially in waiters, if you got the room, mm, you are a pro tip. Silk socks or like drag church socks, mm-hmm. like dress shoe socks, underneath a pair of wool socks. I don't know why somebody told me that forever ago, and it makes a huge difference. I'll try it out this Friday in Louisiana, where mm-hmm. it's going to be negative one. No, no, don't put too thick pair on because then you're, yeah, just you know, put my, you're too much. You don't have any room in there. Yeah, but put my JC Penny socks on. Yes, JC Penny socks under your woolies. The, put the Columbia ones on there. And it is. GT says he does it too. Me and the, me and this guy. I'm the only moron. The same wavelength here. there, yeah, buddy. I'm the only moron that doesn't know how to yeah. clothe themselves. Uh, what else you got? I think I'm out of ideas. 
So mine, I had it written down. Uh, the first one I put on there was just go ahead and buy <laughs> buy one thing for saddle hunting. Coffee not great at the end, huh? Dude, cold coffee. Mm. Yeah, I hate, I hate cold coffee. But anyways, buy one thing for saddle hunting. If they're not already a saddle hunter, just mm -hmm. buy one little strap, the $15, $20 HYS strap, uh, or the is lineman it, belt. Is it HYS or is it HISS? It's hang it was, your stuff strap. Hmm. HYS. I, honestly, I think some. I think they say his too. His his strap. So yeah. what does the SYS stand for? Mm. What does it do? I don't know. There's an SYS strap too. I think it's hang your stuff. That could be totally wrong. So what is store your stuff? Is it a pack? What is it? I don't remember. I just remember seeing. Oh, it. okay. Um. No, yeah. no, it's the SYS hauler. It's the pouches that go on the side of your... There you go. The store sys, your stuff. Oh, store your stuff. Wow. Dude, we... Dude, that was mind-blowing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Between the... In this last 45 minutes, we have made everyone who has listened to this a better hunter and just person all together. Person all together. I mean, this yeah. is this is life-changing stuff. Yeah. When you start mm -hmm. doing this around election time, I bet this country takes a turn. Absolutely. Uh, And then other things I had on there, I put um, merino wool stuff. I was mm -hmm. like... I think I put on there maybe like uh, the underwear because I'm getting the underwear for Christmas. I'm fired up about it. First light underwear. Then I just put first light. Just buy anything first light. I'm changing all my whitetail stuff over to first light gear. Just don't get I'm it. I'm excited about it. All the, I'm fired all, up about it. I'm not going to let anybody talk me out of it. I'm not going to let anybody talk me out of it. All the, the, all the advice that I gave you over the years In about In one ear, out the other. I'm not wearing the – I have some Sitka stuff, and I love it. So – I know, I know. And then you're like, well, why wouldn't you get it? Yeah, I know. I get it. Those gloves that I got last year with the with the two holes, yeah, they're insane. Because they have, How does my pointer finger and my thumb not get cold? You see me wearing this. Like, yeah. I, I wear other stuff, stuff sometimes. Yeah. But I'm telling you, nobody, nobody thinks through their gear better than Setka. Nobody. Yeah, I mean, I, it's good stuff. I mean, like the fact I've got a grunt tube. But Stephen Ranella wears first light. I've man. got so thick. Netflix pays for that. I have a grunt tube holder right here Maybe. that perfectly goes to my mouth on my Sitka jacket. The bottom of it has mesh, so I can leave it in the pocket and in still my, yeah, call. Yeah, like they yeah. think of everything. My bow hunting coat has a diagonal zipper so that when I draw, my stuff doesn't ride up. It has the little hole in the and back. And your jacket doesn't mess up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it has the hole in the back for my um, lifeline strap to come out of, which other yeah. people do that now, but they were the first. Just telling you. Yeah. Anyways, uh, more of that stuff. I had one other good thing on anyways, there, Anyways, go remember. buy Sitka for Christmas if you got a Use money, promo code a Jordan. Bag of one. money. If you got a bag of money to drop. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Jordan 0%. Yeah, Jordan 0 for no percent. <laughs> that is my shameless plug. Yes. Or go to Tide We, T I D E W E, Tide We, and buy some of their gear and use promo code KCO18 at checkout. Uh, GT says he wears Scent Lock. Okay, money guy. Yeah, so that's good stuff. GT, we get it, man. You're rich. Yeah, I'm switching over to First Light because I was a Magellan banded, Magellan banded Carhartt. Black Ovis um, guy, but my Black Ovis, which I'm I'm getting it for, I guess for Christmas. I stock it's just a new face mask. It's a stocking stuffer. It's like it was like ten bucks on on there. Now that I've tried their merino stuff, I'm gonna probably yeah. you got that on camouflage. Mm -hmm. Dang, full the full kit. Thanks for the text. Hey, bro, probably got lost. You must have. Jeez, probably while you were in the Superdome. No, uh, I do need. I was like growing up, we just, I don't know. I guess I was never really taught how to, um, how to layer, I guess, like correctly to, because when you're rifle hunting, it doesn't matter. Let's just be honest. No. You could put on. Being a sleeping bag. Yeah. You, yeah. You would long johns, sweatpants, another pair of sweatpants, your coveralls. Then you put on a hoodie, a big jacket, another big jacket. And all you need to do is go like this. Uh, uh. Mm -hmm. Look like the kid in a Christmas story. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, here we go. Real quick, cut into this. Tr I'm not gonna. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that name. But said he bought his wife the tie we this because she's cold all the time. She lives it. I think he means she loves it. 
Or maybe she lives in it. Or maybe she does maybe live in it. Maybe she loves it so much. Oh, he said loves. But maybe she lives in it and loves it. So yes. get the tie we vest. Awesome. The heated vest. I didn't see. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which we don't need that down here, I don't think. We, will, we will need it Thursday. It's going to be 12 degrees, son. That's true. Um, GTI Door said I got some discounts on the scent lock gear at local pawn shops. Yeah, dude. You want some? I got. A, I have a scent. The only scent block gear I have, I got at Ollie's Bargain Mart. I love Ollie's. I was there with my wife. She was looking at toys or something for work, and I was like, cool, I'm just going to go look around. Mm -hmm. Had a medium. They have random stuff in there. Scent block stuff. Yeah, they had some Carhartt in there one time. No, they had walls. That's what that, it was, uh, which is basically I'm, Carhartt. The last podcast, I was wearing a brown Carhartt hoodie. That's where that came from. Really? Might not be Carhartt brand. It looks like Carhartt. I don't remember what. No, it's not. It's the walls is the same. It's basically it, Carhartt. It's, yeah, yeah, it was it's walls. It's basically Carhartt. Mm -hmm. And they that's what they had in there, too. It's good stuff. It is. Um, But, yeah, I try not to pay full price for any of that stuff. But, like, First Light, we got on Black Friday. So it was, like, 30 or 40% off. So, But now I'm learning to actual layer, like what you're talking about, like wear the merino wool mm -hmm. and then just wear these certain kits. And then you opened up my eyes to Facebook groups about hunting. Which I was on some, like just Louisiana hunters or some craziness right. like that. I think you told me about the sick one, and then I was like, I "Wonder if First Light has one." First Light for sure has one, like a billion of them. And then I went on there and saw some guys that hunted the South, and they were like, "I wear this, this, and this for you know thirty to fifty degrees or forty to sixty degrees." Yeah. And I'm like, "Cause it can be overwhelming when you start seeing all the different dude, stuff." Yeah. Well, and even in the groups, yeah. I mean, like on the Sidka page, they'll say, well, I wear the Equinox hoodie with the so-and-so, yeah. with the Stratus, with the da-da-da-da-da. Right, yeah. And everybody has their own idea about how to do it, but it definitely gives you some direction on... It's like, re it's like, it's like having 10,000 reviewers yeah, in your pocket. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be some times in Louisiana where I'm going to wear my uh, Columbia shorts mm -hmm. and that long sleeve Magellan t-shirt. That's yeah. all I'm going to need. I'm not going to need all that. Well, I mean, but, a, a month apart, I have now, I will now have killed a huge cotton mouth and right. also probably hunt in 12 degrees. I mean, right. that's just what we get it here. It just blows my mind. Yeah. But also, you want to be, especially when you're bow hunting, when you're bow hunting, you want to make sure you can move. You no, want to have appropriate like, gear. Like diagonal zippers? Yeah, like kind diagonal of, that zippers. kind of thing. All that jazz. You want to be able to pull back your bow. Uh, more importantly, climb. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to do all that. I, and that's what I was telling my wife. I was like, yeah, I, th I think I, I'm going to get all the, the gear first, the new whitetail gear, because, again, all I've got is the big puffy stuff. Get some stuff that I can actually climb in first before I invest in a saddle and all this stuff anyways. And then over time, just pick up a little bit of the saddle gear as we go. So maybe you can next probably season. catch deals all year yeah, on the rest uh, of it and save quite a bit of money. Yep, so... Excited Plus, you can actually that. get it. I mean, try to order something right now. There's nothing. It's unreal, yeah. yeah Even it's... when we first started talking about it in November, right? I was like, yeah, I'm thinking about getting a, a saddle stuff for Christmas. Yeah, everything was gone. Everything. Yeah. It's unreal. Yeah, so, I, I bought my stuff in, like, August, and I could only get – what I got was what I could get. Yeah. Like, that's why I got a different different uh, platform and, and all that because that's, that's all that was available. Right. Yeah, I want a huge platform. I want to be able to walk around the tree. You would like mine. Yeah. I might sell it to you because I want a new one. Wow. And I see, love it. Look at there. Boom. A deal. I love it. It's just right there. heavy. And I walk you're a long way. Not a great salesman where you're like, yeah, I'm getting a new one. You want to have this one. Buy it. I love it. It's just I, I, you're not walking two miles to yeah. your spot. And it's too heavy. It's correct. Well, okay. one of the longest shows, but we had to catch up, man. We, we had did. to be friends at the beginning. I mean, it's, we were just so excited. So excited to just see, see one each another. other. And we normally sit here for a while and just... Boys are back in town. Yeah, we had boys to are back in share town. our stories, our woes. Yeah, we didn't really have any woes. I lost in a state championship game. That's a woe. That was a leaky Whoa. waiter. That is a leaky waiter. Yeah. Oh, I have a leaky waiter. You do have mm -hmm. leaky waiters? Uh, my yes. Dang. Yep those those waiters that you were making fun of me for borrowing from my brother for some reason hmm. had a massive leak in them. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Set you up like. Crotch down my entire right leg was just. At least you're killing ducks. Soaked. Yeah, I didn't even notice. Yeah. I said, "Man, my right knee's cold. I bet these have a little pinhole." And I took them off. And I was Soaking just wet. Soaked. I didn't even notice. Must be nice. Kill ducks. Um, make sure you guys follow on Instagram. Like, subscribe, like, do all that. 
that corny and stuff. Ch- and on check YouTube. in with us on Instagram Live when yeah, we record. Oh we love gosh. that stuff, man. Set That's the funnest thing we do. Notifications, man. Uh, thanks for everybody who was who yeah. was talking to I us got tonight. GT, serious and hunter, Andrew Harp, ser- very serious, very hunting. serious hunter. Uh, I mean, he's probably got to go to sleep because he's getting getting up in the morning. He's yes. a very serious hunter, hundred percent. Uh, Trabinoir. Again, uh, that's the name. I, I didn't look want at to me. I can't I see tried. it. Um, all you guys that are Jacob, which it's like, who knows what time in Korea right now, but he popped in for a second. Uh, Jackson Bryan. He's said, in the middle of a war zone match right now. Yes, sir. Best PA teacher in the nation here. But anyways, make sure you guys like, subscribe, do all that. You guys have a Merry Christmas. Enjoy the time with family. And even though it's Christmas Day, Go to church. Oh, go to church. I was like, all right, yeah. What's the point with them? Even though. Anyways, (laughs) see you guys.